All right, so it's time to start working on our second layout. And now you're about to see the beauty of our setup, where we'll simply start by copying project one. So I'll just click on project one folder, press control C and control V to paste it and wait for it to finish. I'll rename it to project two. So it's going to be project two. And once it's done, let's just CD up one level. And actually I should have gone to business side again. So I'm just going to go CD business site and now I'll go CD project two. So instead of going up one level, I should have gone uh, one level down. Okay. So to begin, we can see that we are on the GH pages, a branch, and we first need to delete this uh, git folder because we're not going to be tracking this to begin with and now we can actually simply serve our website to make sure that everything is running smoothly so I'll go jackal serve um, and since we're already inside project 2 we can just press enter and let it run its thing. All right, so server is running right here, which is localhost 4000. So basically this address of 127.0.0.1 column 4000 is actually localhost column 4000. It's exactly the same thing. So if I refresh it right here, we're going to get our first website. All right. So the next thing to do, uh, we're going to stop this server and we're going to run it on a different port. So instead of running it on port 4000, I'll be running it on port 5000. So I'll go jackal serve dash dash port 5000. When I press enter, I'll now be able to view my site right here. So that's how you can use different ports to run your websites. That way you can compare two different websites by simply running uh, your Jekyll sites on different ports. So that's an interesting thing to know. Okay, anyway, let's stop our server. Let's clear our console. And now we can start rebuilding our site so first um, let's open this project too right here and I'll go um, open folder and I'll click on project two and click select folder and this will load the folder inside my VS code editor and let's just drag this out a little bit close the welcome screen and let's start with the index page. So to begin, we can look that we can see that we've got the nav bar right here. And that's the first thing, thing that we're going to focus on. So I want to change this nav bar uh, to some kind of a blue or actually primary color. So let's go to includes here, locate the nav bar. And now that we've got it here, um, I'm going to actually use BG primary, primary, control S to save it, refresh right here. And of course we need to serve it first. So let's do it real quick. And now that it's serving, we can already see it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start building the Jambatron section uh, according to our mockup that we did in Adobe Illustrator. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the image first. So back in here, we've got assets. We're going to go into CSS, main CSS. And now I'm going to remove this background right here 
Okay. And I'm also going to remove the background position because it doesn't make sense anymore. So I'm just going to go File, File, Save All. And now back in here, uh, or actually I'm going to I'm going to try to find my index. So I'm opening the index and I want to see the Jumbotron. So Jumbotron is located in the includes right here. And now I can say BG primary. Okay. So I'll go file, save all. And now when I hit refresh, Okay, it's just regenerated just now. So now I can refresh again and I'll get this nice blue color both on the nav bar and on the Jumbotron. So now for the Jumbotron text, I can simply say text dash white. And let's just view this with toggle word wrap. So that's more um, obvious to see what's going on. So I'll go file, save all. Um, the file has been regenerated, I'd say, so I can go refresh and the text is now white. So the first step that we're going to do in this uh, video to wrap it up is to actually make that diagonal line from our design. And to do that, we're going to use the clip path property that's a CSS property, so uh, let's quickly um, do it right away. All right, so let's go to main.scss, and right here in our Jumbotron, I'm gonna say clip dash path. And before we click clip path, let's see this info. So if I click here, it'll say that it specifies a clipping path where everything inside the path is visible, visible and everything outside is clipped out. So basically what it's saying is that this blue surface that we've got, we're going to limit it by simply describing that this should be the visible area and everything else should be hidden, which will result in our web page not displaying this blue color right here. So that's what we're going to do. So let's say clip path and now I'll specify what we're going to do, we're going to use the polygon and this defines the polygon that we're going to use. So if I click right here, I can now type the, the values and the values are going to be zero, zero to begin with. Then I'm going to say zero, five, eight, three pixels. Then I'm going to do to go 1920 because that's the width of the screen 420 and finally I'll go 1920 and 0 of course this has to be pixels and I'll also view toggle word wrap and now when I finish this I'll simply go file save all refresh and let's wait for it to regenerate so now we can refresh again and for some reason it's not working so let's try to increase the height to 650 pixels go file save all refresh again and one more time and this time you can see that the polygon actually works. Now the reason why it didn't work before was simply because our, our, our height was too small. So we had to increase the height of the whole thing. And that's basically it, how it works in the nutshell. And in the next video, we'll actually improve on what we've done right here.